welcome back to Life and Art with Champagne. We just spoke to the beautiful and amazing Summer Jacobs. She is a model uh, uh, based out of Mumbai right now. So uh, you can go check her page. And uh, and now we have Miss Sikkim, uh, another uh, model. She's been Miss Diva Northeast. So and she's also represented India uh, in Poland against 80 countries. And she she has re you know she has uh, been working and now she's pursuing acting. She's actually done a short film too. So we will talk with uh, Pedin and learn about her journey and hopefully uh, she can inspire more young girls from our region. Uh, Pedin, if you can... Okay, I found you. All right. Hello, sir. Very good evening. Hello, Pedin. Good evening. Namaste, Tashidile. How are you? Tashidile, I have been good. And how have you been so far, sir? Good, good, good. You're like so proper and, and you, you look like a mannequin. All right, let's... This I was is, this getting is ready, I must say. <laughs> Good, good. I'm glad you. I, I you appreciate so that you got ready for my little show, um, and uh, and uh, welcome to Life and Art with Shen Pen. And uh, thank you so much, sir. This is uh, this is not uh, just just to make sure you you know we understand. This is not an interview per se. You know, uh, sure, sure, sure. this is more like a conversation, and especially mm -hmm. you being from you know our part of the world. You know, Sikkim, Darjeeling. <coughs> And uh, so you represent, uh, and there's uh, it, it, whether whether people realize or not, whether you realize or not, you know, uh, you are paving the way for many other young girls who are uh, mm -hmm. aspiring to be models. So right. thank you for thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, sir. I must say I am thrilled to be in conversation with you. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. You I yourself are an inspiration. You yourself are an inspiration to so many out there. So this Thank is definitely you. an honor to have been live with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, so tell us, uh, Peden Ongmo Namgyal, you were born Namgyal. and raised in Sikkim? Gangtok, Sikkim, yes, sir, which is um, in the east of Sikkim. Yes. Pretty much born and brought up here. Yeah. So Sikkim is a beautiful state, the only organic state in India uh, for this is, you know, for all the viewers from around the world that don't know what Sikkim is. So and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so tell us your your name is obviously Buddhist, you know, and, uh, you know, Tibeto Burmese kind of name. Mm -hmm. So you you are Sikkimese and uh, Sherpa. So um, my roots um, from my father's side, I am a little bit of Tibetan. And my mom is uh, originally a Tamang. So I'm a mix of um, Tibetan and Tamang. Very nice. Tibetan. And did you know that Tamang also, they're basically, their ancestral roots are Tibet. Okay, that is new to me. <laughs> you didn't know that. Oh, it's not your fault. You're I very young. That. So Ta, Ta means horse, Ma means war. So people, okay. the cavalry, people who went to war uh, on horses, they're, they were called Tamas and the Anga oh, at, added yeah, later. That's how the word came up. Okay. Tama. Tama. And they are, they are, they're predominantly from the eastern part of Tibet okay. originally. So, so nice to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, that Tibetan DNA in, in your, in your yes. <laughs> blood and bones. Yes. So, so tell us, you know, you've been doing this since uh, 2017 or since 2017 when did you start? 2017 was the... Yes, sir. so 2017 was the first time I got into pageants. The year 2017, I did one, two, three, four pageants in a year. Um, back wow. to back. And four after pageants my pageant journey, four pageants in a year. I ended up doing four in a year. <laughs> and so after my pageants wow. um, got over, I got into modeling after that. So I have been professionally modeling for about a little over two years, you can say. Mm. So, uh, you know, and, and I think I think I, I kind of briefly mentioned that the, my purpose to do this show is to be of information, to be of education and to bridge the gap somehow, because when we were growing up, we didn't have a lot of information, mm -hmm. to, you know, because we wanted to do right. so many things. But we didn't have role models. Mm -hmm. So you're a role model for, mm -hmm. for our girls in, in the Northeast and Tibetan girls, Nepalese girls, you know, Sikkimese. 
So tell us a little bit of, you know, let's go back and talk about your initial journey. What, when did you know that you wanted to walk the runway? When did you know that you wanted to dress up and be in front of the camera? When did you know that I want to be on, on a magazine? When mm -hmm. did you know that? So, um, being very honest with you, I like, I like everybody who asks me, you know, how did I get into modeling and everything? Um, growing up, I never thought I would um, get into pageants or become a model, model as such. But um, I was always on the taller side of girls um, from the hills. Um, right. But so like I had my juniors back in school who would always say, you know, you, they would tease me and they would say, Miss Universe, oh, model, I am model. They would always tease me. But then I was just like, Chah, no, just go, no. You know, like that. And but then I, I was in class 12. I remember when a senior of mine, she was releasing a clothing line of hers and she wanted me to model for her for a clothing line. And so that was when I actually sort of first professionally um, got shot. Um, and then I remember throughout the shoot that I'm actually enjoying this. But, to, but like, this was sorry to interrupt. This but was, This was in in Sikkim? This was in Sikkim itself, yes. So my senior, she'd gone uh, to Dubai and she'd done this fashion course and she'd come back and she was releasing her own clothing line. So that was when I actually did my first um, photo shoot assignment, so as to say, modeling wise. Right. And then, like I told you, I remember thoroughly enjoying the shoot process and everything, you know, getting dolled up. And um, although it was a bit tasking, but um, I definitely enjoyed it throughout. Right. And uh, and for, for all the viewers, uh, please do share this conversation. Uh, this is going to be very, very informative. And a lot of young girls who wants to pursue or who are contemplating on pursuing this, this could be uh, some sort of a master class for you guys. Mm -hmm. So please share I, I it. Hope, I hope that happens. It will be. We will make sure it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you went to uh, Tashi Namgyal Academy School. Yes, sir. TNA is a very uh, TNA is a well-known school in Sikkim. Uh, it yes, is an ICAC-based school, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when you say you're senior, you meant senior from school. Senior from school, yes. So okay. she was um, two years senior than me in school, and um, I grew up here. And then I did my schooling from Tashi Amgal Academy. But for two years in between, I remember I went to Saint Joseph's Convent, Kalimpong, wherein I was a mm. brother. But then. Um, I fell, Deep in the valley um, by the sweet flowing river. Sweet flowing, yes. Rivers. <laughs> so yes, yeah, I yes. sort of fell very sick in between. So I had to be rushed back home immediately. So I landed back oh. into my old school being TNA. Amazing. So so now we talked about your first experience with your uh, with your uh, you know fellow schoolmate who who was doing the sh her line of clothes and you you said you enjoyed it. So yes. now enjoying it in Sikkim in your home ter turf is one thing. How did you, you know, because for our culture, you know, this is mm -hmm. still a very new endeavor, right? Mm -hmm. Amro culture, our culture. Right, right, right. So, uh -huh. so how did you uh, muster up that, you know, courage or the craziness some might have called or thought, you know, in our, our parents, when I said mm -hmm. I wanted to become a, musician or a filmmaker you know our families thought it, i was crazy in the beginning mm -hmm. so when when did you and how did you decide that you were gonna go in the middle of you know this this big pool of fashion world and try and make your name and try and represent uh, how did that courage or mm -hmm. how did that start how did that happen I think most of the courage in whatever I do, I think it comes from my parents because they've always been very supportive in whatever I've chosen to do. Um, they've played a very, very big role in where I am today. And I think um, just um, I knew that at the back of my head that whatever I'll be doing, I'll have my parents' love and support. And not only my parents, I have so many well-wishers, so many friends who support me. And um, mm -hmm. I think it was a courage that I got from them and the self-belief. <laughs> Wow, that is amazing. So for, for everyone listening and all our viewers right now, uh, if you are a young parent or, or you have mm -hmm. young sisters, uh, you just heard what Pedden said, supporting our, our kids and our you know, <gasps> siblings uh, in pursuing their dreams is, is very important. Sorry, yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. tell us about your, your first experience of a big 
uh, pageant. Tell us your first, Miss Sikkim was the first one, right? Miss Sikkim was the first pageant, the first, um, yes, uh, locally, which is held locally here. And um, I think when I was into the pageant uh, thing of it, I never took it as a competition. I was in there too, you know, that, you know, I'm getting to meet new people. I'm here to experience something new. And that is what all kept me pushed and motivated through my pageant days. And right. one pattern led to another. And then that is how I landed up um, representing my country in Poland. <laughs> wow. So you, you were a Miss India and you went to, as a Miss India, you went to Poland. And uh, right, so sir. before that, so let's, let's, let's uh, go back, rewind a little bit. Let's, we'll mm -hmm. go to Poland in a little bit. Uh, All right. How, how was your journey in India first? You know, where you, you participated in some big pageant, did you? Mm -hmm. So, well, um, um, so, um, the pageant that happened in Sikkim, which is the Miss Sikkim and Miss Northeast Diva, was obviously very in like a smaller scale, so as to say, compared to the pageant that happens in Bombay, because of the obvious reasons. Um, I would be very honest with you, when I went to Bombay, I was actually very intimidated at first, um, because it was a very new city um, altogether, and I'd never yeah. been to Bombay before. But then also my mom was always there to accompany me and she stayed with me for the first four or five days of it. And um, I knew that I was prepared. Um, see, preparation is key, I think, when you're stepping into any field in life. And I had got a lot of experience from Miss Sikkim and um, Miss Northeast as well. So that definitely helped me when I went for the Miss India in Bombay. Mm. Yeah. So how, how, like you just talked about preparing yourself what were some of the preparation that you initiated as as pedanongmo like what did you do to prepare yourself what did you tell yourself you know when you were going to mumbai when you were intimidated in mumbai what did you mm -hmm. tell yourself push yourself forward so there's this thing i do um whenever i pass by a mirror i just look at myself and give myself a huge smile i don't know some of it psychologically helps me um i know i um okay i think the connection is poor today can you hear me so yes, so, yes yeah I that can, is what i, I do i just look at myself and give myself a huge smile makeup when i have my makeup no makeup when i have when i have a lot of breakouts on my face no breakouts that is something i just you know sort of tell myself that you're doing good and that um you know be confident and believe in yourself i think That's that amazing. pretty much does the trick most of the time for me mm. <laughs> Wow. And, uh, and then, of course, your parents' support uh, definitely boosts your confidence. Yes, right? that is always there for me. Right. What are some of, what are some of the things that you've done or, or some habits that you might have developed uh, to boost your confidence? I think um, being prepared and uh, being well read in the field that I'm dri diving into. I think reading into... You said being well read? being well read, getting yourself into the subject of what you're dealing with. Like for example, fashion. So I always made sure I followed lots of fashion pages online on the social media. And that's how I kept myself um, um, fresh and um, fresh in, in terms of fashion. And so, you know, I feel when you have that inside of you, uh, when you know you've done your material read, I think that pretty much uh, makes you confident about what you're getting yourself into. So basically, you're saying knowledge is power. Knowledge does give you confidence. Yes, Being definitely. Being knowledgeable. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so all our viewers and all our 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 girls from the Northeast and Tibetan girls, uh, being knowledgeable and 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 reading and learning about the 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 mm -hmm. industry that you're interested in is very important. Mm -hmm. So True. that's a good tip. Uh, so now tell us about uh, Poland. When you went to Poland and you participated, mm -hmm. uh, there were 80 countries, right? Yes. Yes. How was that experience? I mean, the first time I was ever in Poland, it was, um, as we all know, it's a very, very cold country. <laughs> but then, you know, seeing um, different cultures. Did you eat different... pierogies? Did you eat pierogies? I don't think so. I mostly remember eating a lot of pork and turkey. Cabbage. They eat a lot of cabbage. And, uh, and then pierogies is basically a Polish momo. 
Okay, we didn't have that on the menu, sadly. Okay, <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But go ahead. It's all right. So it's all right. right. It's not an issue. So yes, um, you know, definitely, eighty different girls from eighty different countries, um, different cultures, different traditions, and um, I always took it as um, um, you know. I I felt very lucky in a way because I was representing my country one and two I'm here under a under a single roof with eighty different girls with eighty different stories and um, that was very interesting to me and um, we would interact with each other because see you're in that pageant pageant um, environment and wherein um, kindness is promoted wherein you're being friendly and being helpful is promoted so everybody is sort of very helpful. Suddenly, and positive. So, so it's the I, environment that was created. Yeah, it was a very positive and happy and helpful environment, and so um, it was it was a beautiful experience. Were you were you uh, were you also nervous? Oh yes, there were days I would get very nervous because then when you're at a pageant, and especially when you're at an international pageant, um, girls are dressed from their head to toe. and they really really dressed and really dolled up and you feel like oh my god no maybe she's prettier than me but i never let all of that get it get into my head um but yeah a lot of learnings also happened right and and you 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 met i mean meeting 80 girls from 80 different cultures i mean that's mm-hmm. a that's a great opportunity to learn so much about different cultures right mm-hmm. so so what what were some of, who were some of the you know countries that uh that you really bonded with the countries i really bonded with were um um indonesia who was my roommate and um the other one was miss korea who also won the pageant um i really liked both of them and i really connected with the both of them because they were just very humorous and i don't think they ever took everything too seriously but they were also mm. very smart and hard working So you know we would have our days like when the whole program would get over for the day we would come to our rooms and just chit chat and just laugh and joke around and be silly you know that is why I really connected with these two I feel and we are still wow. in touch Oh that's amazing that's wonderful mm-hmm. um, and Miss Indonesia is also getting married this December looking forward to meeting her Oh so you're going for the wedding Yes I am Uh is this happening in Bali Bali, Indonesia. No, it's happening in Jakarta. Sorry, Jakarta. Oh, Jakarta. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Well, I'm sure you'll have a great time. Um, so, you. so, you know, I something just popped in my head right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, a curiosity. Mm-hmm. You went to Poland, representing India. Mm-hmm. So you went as Miss mm-hmm. India. Did you experience uh, a, a, a surprise factor, a shock factor, like oh? Miss India, because you know there are stereotypes and there is a stigma. Yes. Because India, they yes. would they would mm-hmm. assume a different looking uh, right. girl. So when they see somebody who looks mm-hmm. Japanese, Korean, you know, mm-hmm. uh, a girl is Miss India. Did that was mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. did was that a thing? Yes, experience? that that was the case. Actually, like two or three of the girls would come up to me and they would be like, "But you don't look very, you know, Indian, Indian, the mainstream Indian." So as to say, I had to give them this whole explanation as to wherein, like, we have the seven northeastern states in India, and um, our features are a bit Oriental because our roots come from the Mongolians. So um, it was good to um, um, sort of, you know, give them an information about our country that our country is diverse as such. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, so, apart from that, uh, you know, you've been working as a model for the last two years, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Two years. So you've you've done a lot of shows. You've you've walked. Uh, you know, you've done a lot of walk and fashion shows, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, how has some of some of your experience, you know, in the mainstream world of fashion mm-hmm. been? And were there some some myths that were broken for you or was there some disappointments or were there some pleasantly surprised you know surprising experiences tell us all of those all of those <laughs> all of those emotions um many myths were broken many you know disappointments and some you know like wow um it's a very um fast paced life especially when it comes to fashion and fashion shows everybody's run 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 um because the show needs to run on time your rehearsals need to happen on time um 
because they're putting up a show for an audience so you cannot really delay when it comes to that you need to be very professional so um it's a very um collective um program so as to say as we all know and um a lot of myths um a lot of disappointments as in um you know it all looks glamorous and pretty from the outside but it's not that it's very you need to be um on your toes all the time being you need to wear your 6 inch heels 12 hours a day and um, so it's not as pretty as it looks but then i enjoy what i do and I so you like deal it. with it. you just deal with it yeah yeah you that's amazing so yeah so in in mainstream india because i know you worked in mumbai and uh, you've done shows in mumbai um have you experienced you know and somebody posed this question to uh, mm-hmm. uh have you experienced racism um i i usually i mean i i know these answers but still for mm-hmm. people and if you did how did you uh how did you handle it i have faced racism especially when it comes to my workplace um i will give an example as to how it happened so um i was in a pool pool a batch of models and there was another northeastern model in pool b and then this girl calls me by the other girl's name purposely and although racism that racism was very subtle but racism is racism at the end of the day and, and then i had to go to her and explain to her i am peden the one with short hair and the other one is this the one with long hair it's simple as that <laughs> right right and it happens very subtly very subtly but um it is racism at the end of the day yeah yeah so you like i mean we you know we have the same ethnic background and we look you know mm-hmm. uh, for like we're from the same background so i have experienced mm-hmm. that too you know me working in mumbai even though i i am making I I made the film and even though I I you know uh, was working in a movie I was the director so I'm like basically the mm-hmm. boss but still yeah. I faced uh, I faced uh, mm-hmm. racism you know because yeah. uh, so many times uh, people would ask me you know and and it, and then there's this very single kind of uh, perception oh you know are you mm-hmm. chinese or mm-hmm. you know or you know like these things I mean so and it's been going on for so long but i think we're living in a very um um uh, exciting and uh time. turning point because time. for the first time uh, all of us are mm-hmm. talking about it for the first time yes. it is being discussed mm-hmm. and uh, and and not everyone in india is racist not everyone in mumbai is racist you know we have a lot True. of friends who are who are from the middle india from the mm-hmm. hindi speaking belt and they're mm-hmm. supportive and they're understanding right. but there is still a lot of racism and racism mm-hmm. i think to a certain extent if we were to be honest it exists mm-hmm. in all cultures it does you know? it does so so mm-hmm. before it is it is important for us to undo our own racisms and deconstruct mm-hmm. and declutter our own racisms too and mm-hmm. and we all contribute to a better society i think you know True. so so i'm glad and i'm i'm so happy to know that you know uh, a young girl like your you know like you mm-hmm. going going places and and facing challenges and facing your fear and dealing with it with positivity and being so positive i appreciate it and i i i commend you for that and i'm proud of you uh so now um uh, tell uh before i go into acting and all that i, I hello can you hear me or connection is yes, i can hear you sir okay so before we delve into uh, a different aspect of your of your life now mm-hmm. uh, i i want to ask you what important advice would you give to our girls from the northeast you know tibetan girls nepalese girls northeastern mm-hmm. girls who wants to pursue who are young they might be 15 mm-hmm. years old right now they might be 14 mm-hmm. and they want to do this you know mm-hmm. 16 uh what would you what would you uh tell them as somebody who's experienced mm-hmm. so i think firstly the younger you start the better because then um by the time you're 20 or you're 21 you've learned so much more so i think um it's very important you believe in yourself like i keep on saying everybody whoever asks me you know it's very important self belief is very important you need to be confident in yourself and um just work hard i think if you work hard nothing's going to stop you in whatever you're choosing to do 
so i think hard work confidence and self belief are the three keys in um um trying to pursue what you want to mm-hmm. and and you do face uh, failures right you do face mm-hmm. rejections mm-hmm. right and and so sure rejections i think it's just a part of everybody's life and um right. um failures and rejections are there to teach you to become better when you fail at a certain thing you go back you learn you work on it and then you come back stronger i think that is what failures are for right right to push so, yourself forward stronger than before right right so what are some things that peden omo does in her daily life that helps her uh, stay relevant that helps her stay grounded that helps her stay focused so to stay relevant i have the use of social media at my hand um i just <laughs> post a lot of stories interact yeah. with uh, friends interact with my sort of followers and um to answer your second question which is how do i as to how i stay grounded i do a lot of house chores i sometimes i just take out some of the clothes from the washing machine and put them to dry and then when they dry i bring them out and help my mom to fold them and settle them nicely in my cupboard so these are the few things i do to stay grounded and relevant very good very good um and and the reason why i asked uh, this is because mm-hmm. this this the industry itself uh is is so uh, it is a toxic environment too you know there is a lot of mm-hmm. toxicity mm-hmm. and there is a lot of um uh superficiality there's a lot of you know materially driven uh mm-hmm. so a lot of people lose themselves i don't know so much mm-hmm. about india but in in new york and paris the fashion world um especially back in the 90s and even 2000s you know there was a lot of drugs involved you know in the fashion world because mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. pressure the pressure would be so much for models right and the uh, right. insecurity and the fear and then the 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 peer pressure and then so much mm-hmm. so so a lot of like in the west a lot of drugs was involved you know you know mm-hmm. gia uh, gia's story right angelina jolie played there is this movie called gia if you guys haven't okay. seen this movie um you should watch this movie called gia gia is about a okay. supermodel and angelina has played it it's a very uh, uh i think this movie is at least about 20 years old 15 20 years old i must uh, watch it soon yeah it's called yes, gia Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh so so that's why I brought it up, you know, and I think it is so important to stay grounded uh mm-hmm. because it is very easy to get like lost in this this sure. world, you know? Mm-hmm. Um so I appreciate that. Now, um talk about your your not, you know, your 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 maybe not actively okay. the clumsy person that I I'm, I'm so sorry I'm so sorry no, that's okay that's okay um um not you know not that you're actively pursuing it but I know that you're open to acting now and you are mm-hmm. you want to you want to do more and you recently did a film right you did a a, mm-hmm. a noir a short black film. and white short film mm-hmm. um, film and fashion and music and all I mean they're all kind of seen in the same uh-huh. yeah but but again they're in terms of craft they're very different mhm true right? so so how did how was your experience working in the film and and you know you were playing the lead in that did mm-hmm. that did that instill this love for acting or no oh i've always loved the movies um growing up um i my mom is just the sort of person who would watch every movie that was playing out there in in town so she would just take me along with her you know grew up watching a lot of bollywood movies and bajra bajra cinema bajra house. cinema hall and denzong cinema hall so movies have always fascinated me um is i think it's because of the world that you're able to create um inside a movie i think that is what intrigued me and um yes i am uh, looking at the acting I have been looking at acting off late and it was a really wonderful experience and it was really um something really different to me because the role that I was um sort of playing is very opposite to how I am as a person I was playing a dark role um I was playing a conniving woman so um definitely was challenging for me but then um 
I had a lot of workshops in between and a lot of help from my directors, writers and co-actors. So it definitely helped me um, put all that together. Mm. What after, after working in a film, even though it's a short film, after mm -hmm. experiencing uh, the process of filmmaking, mm -hmm. what changed in your perception towards film or movies? Um, that is not easy. Acting is not easy at all. <laughs> and, and filmmaking. That's... Sorry? And the filmmaking, the whole process, right? And the whole process, getting your lighting right, um, short continuity. My God, so many factors that goes into putting up a scene which could only just be shown on the big screen for like five or six seconds. My goodness, it was a very... Um, Daunting. Mind opening, mind opening right. experience, so as to say. So did you, did you think, do you think that you found a uh, new, newfound respect for filmmakers and actors? Definitely, I must say, definitely. Yeah. It gets quite um, physically and mentally tasking. Um, but yeah, we're all doing it for the art. <laughs> yeah. But you enjoyed it? Did you enjoy it? Yes, I did. I tried to keep my calm. Um, I tried to be patient. And um, are you I not was, a patient um, person? I am general, a really I, patient person. I am a really patient person. Okay, good. And okay, I think so I got helped. that. Sorry. No, Sorry, go sir. Ahead. What was so I think I um, got that from my father because um, growing up, my father um, and us we used to go out for camping and angling and angling as in fishing. So you know, you need, sometimes there would be times wherein you have to just wait and wait and wait and wait. So I think all those um, times we went for angling and camping really brought about patience in me as a person. Mm -hmm. So when you when you made that film and when you worked in that film, uh, you guys, uh, from what I know, you shot, uh, there was a lot of night scenes, right? Mm -hmm. Shot at night. So all of them were shot at night after 10 yeah. p.m. So how many hours would you work on, on uh, you know, on a day? Uh, and mm -hmm. how long would it take? What was it? To, to walk us through a little bit of your experience on set. Mm -hmm. So all of our film has been shot only post 10 p.m. And uh, there have been days wherein um, our shoot would go until 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. in the morning. So you have to reach the sets by 7.30 to 8 p.m. And then by the time you wrap up, sometimes it would be like 10 a.m. So, um, yeah, so... Those were most of our days and uh, we would see sunrises and um, all of that. Um, mm. Yeah, um, our routines had completely changed. Mm. So how would you compare your modeling experience, you were, were, were you know, walking mm. the ramp and walking for designers and walking for fashion shows, going to Poland and participating in a big pageant contest? What was that experience versus this short film, like two? What was that? Um, so between the two, I try to um, sort of um, find a similarity to make my work easier, I guess. Because I feel when I'm walking on the ramp, it's all about emotions. You know, you emote the clothes you wear. So even like when I was acting, I try to sort of put that um, formula that I've made up for myself. So I try to actually not, you know, Instead of differentiating the two worlds, I try to bring about a similarity, which um, helped me go through it. Right, right. So, um, in this lockdown, this this quarantine period, uh, you mm -hmm. know, everybody's uh, forced to stay at home, and and it hasn't been easy for many people. Um, how have you been keeping busy? What have you been doing, uh, or have you done? or try doing something new in your life during this quarantine? During this quarantine, um, I actually don't think I've done anything new. But then um, <laughs> a new thing that happened, to, a new thing that sort of happened to me is I grew two of my wisdom teeth and I try to get back to painting. Um, growing up, I've painted, I've sketched. And uh, I had actually stopped doing that for the past four or five years of my life. But in this time, I actually opened my sketchbook and I got into painting. I do a lot of singing to just sort of keep myself sane. 
on that, lot of on that, on, I yeah, he do that a lot note, of karaoke after dinner. I I was I was coming to uh, singing. I was because I heard and I some people were commenting that Tedin is a good singer, uh, and I mm -hmm. I love the openness and the honesty that. Um, and I'm also, you know, apart from being a filmmaker myself, I'm mm -hmm. also a musician. You know, I write yes, songs. I write so, mm -hmm. so um, I, I, I was wondering, maybe you can sing two lines and and show your singing voice talent. I knew crazy. that was coming. I knew that was. Well, coming. how can I? How can I not? How can I not put you on the spot when when we have Miss mm. India here? And who loves to sing pa post dinner? Uh, you're gonna sing <laughs> because you know we have people watching from all over, and I, I mean this is all inspiring for young people, right? You can do so many things. You can paint. Oh, you can so. cook. You can wash clothes, uh, and mm -hmm. like you said, you you fold clothes with your mom. You go do groceries, uh, but you also do get dolled up. So keeping it real, as they say in the U.S., you keeping it real, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so so let's hear let's hear your favorite song. Uh, just two lines. Okay, Think of it so as I, okay, so I actually have a lot of favorites, but the song has been stuck to me since ever since the time I watched the film A Star Is Born, starring Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Amazing movie. So yes, I Amazing. watched that movie with my mom, and we cried throughout. So um, this song is um, called Shallow. Oh, I love it! I love it. Yes. So let Beautiful me give it song. a try. Um, Yay! All right, people. Don't before judge. She sings, don't judge. Before she sings, before she sings, all my, all my audience, all my viewers, let's give her a big round of applause. Let's see those claps. Let's see those claps. Come on. Let, before let I even claps. begun. Before I even. Yeah, 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 yeah. Support, support, okay, so, motivate. <laughs> okay, so here it goes. Um, tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Mm -hmm. Ain't it hard keeping it so hardcore? I'm falling in all the good times. I find myself longing for a change, and in the bad times, I feel myself. I'm off the deep end, watch as I dive in I'll never meet the ground Crash through the surface where they can hurt us We're far from the shallow now In the shallow, shallow In the shallow, shallow, low, low in the shallow, shallow, we're far from the shallow now. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. That was that was amazing. I, was, I, I, I got really nervous. I'm sorry. Oh, I could tell. I could tell. But but you know what? This is you. You were one step closer to beating that. Nervous. You're one step closer uh, to becoming becoming uh, that, that that that's... confident, more confident <laughs> person that you are meant to be. And you know what? As an artist myself, and as a creator, you know, mm -hmm. I I I know I know what it takes to go up on stage. I know what it takes mm -hmm. to perform. I know what it takes to talk in front of people. I mean, mm -hmm. this might it, it might seem like oh, it's so easy. These guys are doing it so easy, but you know, it, it's not. It takes a mm -hmm. long. Uh, it takes many many years of practice and many years of you know uh, rigorous okay. e exercise okay, yes. in front of an audience <laughs> yeah yeah and, and and an audience that you cannot see right now but no you know mm -hmm. that there are people watching yes. and then yeah. so 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 it's very much evident that. out there yes yes okay. props to that and and uh, so all our viewers like you know i i just want uh, this the reason why i why why i made this episode you know i'm doing different episodes mm -hmm. like film poetry psychology mm -hmm. acting and my entire purpose is is to uh, somehow facilitate inspiration somehow facilitate mm -hmm. education and information for for our little uh, sisters from the mountains mm -hmm. you know and that is mm -hmm. my goal and whoever else is watching you know i hope this is all inspiring 
and mm -hmm. uh, we need so much positivity in our in our world and and oh. art is one of the most beautiful proven uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, human phenomena that that always right. works <laughs> right mm -hmm. during this quarantine if we look at social media and if we look at the world doesn't matter mm -hmm. what culture what language what country you are it is sure. it is the it is the art it is the music mm -hmm. it is it is the musicians that are mm -hmm. bringing a lot of peace and and sanctity unity. and uh -huh. unity all over the world so it is very important to support art it is very important right. to uh, support you know creative people and mm -hmm. especially in our community you know mm -hmm. uh, our community is still a little behind when it comes to being progressive you are very mm -hmm. fortunate that you come from a very progressive family but our culture is yet to kind of grow and develop and mm -hmm. and we are doing our part to to make to make that happen to mobilize that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so all our viewers i request you all to be more open minded read more be culturally sensitive learn more and support our creative people it, you know i appreciate you singing i appreciate you being so candid you know talking about yourself and uh, uh you know without any filters without any masks so to me that is a beautiful quality and you will thank go you far so thank yeah. you so yeah so um we have about 15 minutes so mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about uh how um do you have siblings Yes I do I have a younger brother we are like 2 years apart Okay so how is uh, I've seen stories so I know I can kind of I know the relationship but let tell mm -hmm. everybody what is your relationship like uh with your brother My I'm brother coming a, my I'm coming to a Sorry I'm coming to a very important segue here so uh -huh. that's why All right so um me and my brother we've never been those type of siblings who would you know have fights in between them I think that always um that was that was never there because our parents always sort of brought us up very that our parents brought us up equally um and so that um we never had those sort of sibling rivalries or sibling fights we're very close we're like two peas in a pod we have the same sense of humor and it's just he gets me i get him um we have we share a lot of inside jokes and i even think we look like to which he disagrees completely but then <laughs> yeah but then yeah and we very close um we have the same sort of interests and um so you guys him. are like friends we we more like friends yes we never had that sort of boundary between us you know that you're a brother you're a sister um we very close mm. and and in your household the male figures um father brother brother uh, how are mm -hmm. they yeah father and brother Uh, mm -hmm. how how are they very protective of you or are they very progressive and liberal or are they very strict well my father has always been very liberal um when it came to bringing us up being my father and sorry being my brother and myself um but then he is you know like how fathers are a little bit like possessive about their daughters that is definitely there mm -hmm. but um he was always very liberal and um and just let us run around wherever um we wanted to go <laughs> mm -hmm. so that's amazing so I, i think i think for us uh men um especially from our culture you know tibetan sikkimis nepalese whatever you know the himalayan uh men there is a lot of there is a lot of change that we need to uh bring in our own cultures uh there's a mm -hmm. lot of evolution that needs to happen in terms of right. uh, gender gender sensitivity you know uh, mm -hmm. so how do you feel about uh you know the disparity i i know that you have an experience mm -hmm. that in your family uh, with yourself mm -hmm. but you mm -hmm. do know that exi it still exists uh, mm -hmm. so how does that make you feel mm -hmm. the inequality or the the mm -hmm. disparity between gender in our in our no, communities it's, it's it's definitely um something that is very prevalent um happens in a small scale happens in a large scale i have seen that in my friends place um and it's very sad and um i feel for what everybody's i feel for what you know they go through um when it comes to sort of a disparity and uh, i think um it's very important um you understand that um there's no need to 
have that sort of um discrimination so as to say when it comes to gender um and i think because i feel that human beings we're all um we're all the same we're all of the same race humanity and we were all born equal all of oh god the god the creator the, he gave us all brains and then um i don't know from where all of the disparity and all of that started coming up but it's very important that everybody understands that hate mm. is never good and discriminating yeah. and um differentiating people based on their culture race um you know all of that it's never good <laughs> wonderful that's so so uh, such a such nice words uh to come out of a young mind mm-hmm. like yourself i'm so proud of your generation you know um i'm not that much older it's not like i'm an old guy but but mm-hmm. i uh my generation my time and even your time there's a huge change uh mm-hmm. my sister you guys uh you know you are i mean there's still a lot of issues and there's still a lot of wrongs to be right and a lot of right. uh, a lot of work to be done but mm-hmm. at the same time Uh, we're also living in probably the fairest and the best time so far mm-hmm. you know i agree uh, i agree so so a lot to be grateful for and to keep uh striving forward to to mm-hmm. progress and and especially our part of the world you know and uh, and you're very fortunate that you live in sikkim and you're from sikkim because mm-hmm. i know sikkim very well i have some very good friends and i have family there uh mm-hmm. you know sikkim is uh, it's it's not so much of a evidently uh misogynist patriarchal mm-hmm. culture there it's right. still there yeah, but sikkim is quite uh, progressive comparatively you know mm-hmm. so absolutely uh, true so now in sikkim when when you when you attend functions or weddings or events in gangtok mm-hmm. right or wherever in sikkim mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. how are how do people react with you how do people talk to you how what do they say? how do little girls talk to you um <laughs> the reaction that i get from people are always so humbling um because they recognize me from somewhere like they've heard of me since um sikkim is a very small place and word spreads like fire you know and uh, all the reactions you know i get from um small girls or when people are like oh peden um you know it's very humbling and it just makes me want to um push myself towards um my purpose so as to say in life and just sort of inspire um people more mm. and so talking about that this you know touching on the last word that you said how do you how do you keep yourself inspired how do you keep inspiring you know staying inspired what do you do so to sort of inspire myself i always know that there is a lot of space for learning and there is a lot of space for me to become the best version of myself there is so much life ahead of me so many um things i haven't experienced so many people i haven't met so many great people i haven't um met or been in the same room with so i think that just keeps inspiring me um me not knowing the me knowing the fact that there's so much more learning i need to do in life inspires me Every that's day. that's amazing and you're right you're right you have your entire life ahead of you and and mm-hmm. i personally i personally think that you have you have you've just scratched the surface and there's so much more to achieve and so much more more to learn because yes. and that's that's pretty much my mantra too every day you know i tell myself uh, i mean mm-hmm. you know with what i'm doing in my life right now and with where i'm trying to go uh, mm-hmm. when i look at it uh from a skeptic cynical you know perspective it is very right. daunting and it is intimidating because everything mm-hmm. looks so far and everything looks mm-hmm. so impossible but then i mm-hmm. i keep telling myself you know there is no shortcut i just got to right. keep pushing keep pushing mm-hmm. keep moving forward and keep learning mm-hmm. and then i i i i uh, i'm so glad that you you said keep learning you know you you like to mm-hmm. learn and and i always tell younger people to keep learning um So we have 10 minutes left. I am mm-hmm. going to uh let our viewers uh throw in some questions. Oh, Please let's, uh, let's go through our questions. Please uh no, let's let's do some new questions because I've been okay. looking at it. Let's mm-hmm. do uh we have 10 minutes. So 
Uh, I will read out uh, as many questions as I can. Let's keep the questions contextual. Let's stay in the context. Let's know. Mm -hmm. Let's not go <laughs> all over the place. So mm -hmm. please, uh, if you have any questions for Pedin, uh, please type in <laughs> the comment section down there. She was already a favorite of Miss India that year. Okay. All I right. remember this person in particular because he keeps um, writing me so many positive messages. J Mondop nine nine. Well, thank you, J Mondop nine nine, for thank uh, you so much supporting you so and much. encouraging. How many languages do you speak? Tenzin Seddon asks. Hi, Tenzin Seddon. So I speak three. I know how to speak in three languages, being English, Nepali, and Hindi. Mm -hmm. And uh, how is your Hindi, by the way? Hindi, I would like to believe it's good. Um, and people have actually been surprised, you know. Um, they've told me that my Hindi is um, good. <laughs> I don't mean to brag or anything, but um, yeah, because I had Hindi as my third language when I was back in school. So I think okay. that really helped me develop um, that. Cool. So uh, tri trippy, tastic, modeling or acting? question hey both. both why not right yes why not all right tenzis tenzis to sutum wow well, what about your height hi tenzi i am five six five six with flats five uh eleven with uh five inch Kids. stiletto yes <laughs> <laughs> all right um your favorite actor, your your big supporter asks, who is your favorite actor? My favorite actor is Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo yes. DiCaprio, of course, of course. Yes. Yes. Uh, who is your this? I like this question. Who is your role role model, uh, female role model in the fashion industry? Past in the present. fashion industry, let me um say Naomi Campbell because she is a legend, as you all know, and. I think her walk is just so, I mean, that woman, I've, I've watched so many of her walk videos from the past, from the 80s, from the 90s. And that woman, just her energy that she uses when she's on the ramp is just so breathtaking. So yeah, annoying. Yeah. And the confidence, her, her the confidence. confidence and her posture on, mm -hmm. on the walk. 90s, she killed it. Like, you know, the, the big Iconic. six. Well, was, I was trying to remember Linda Evangelista and uh, Claudia, Claudia Schiffer, Schiffer Turlington, Chrissy Turlington, Kate, Kate Moss, Moss yeah, Cindy yeah, Crawford. Yeah. Amazing. Those were, those were, those were, I think, I, I personally think that was the golden era of mm -hmm, models. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel had, the same like, too. Yeah. I feel the same. I definitely feel the same. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, you are an amazing dancer, somebody says. I happen to actually know that too because um, I didn't meet you in Mumbai, but I mm -hmm. saw a video uh, because we have a young, very talented young Sikkimese boy, mm -hmm. uh, Mingma. He's, he, he also participated in some big Indian dance competition. Dance show, yes. Dance show. And he's mm -hmm. now a, choreogra uh, he's a choreographer in Mumbai, in Bollywood, yes. and he's working hard. And he's an amazing dancer. And mm -hmm. he he did something with you and he you danced. I saw a little video somewhere. Oh, yes. So that was the first time I ever did that form of dance. Mm -hmm. And um, we shot all of that in a day. So we suddenly made plans the previous day in the evening. As you know, why not? you know, collaborate and make a video. It would be very nice and fun. And then I was like, yeah, why not? And so th we met up the next day. Um, we rehearsed for three hours and he was a very good teacher. And so we rehearsed for three hours and we shot um, the video um, post midnight. So we shot till about like 4 a.m. in the morning. That was mm -hmm. how the whole thing went down. Okay, cool. All right. So we have uh, five minutes. Uh, I'm looking for interesting questions. So uh, <laughs> please pardon me if I'm not reading all the questions uh, because some are quite obvious. And uh, mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's see. It was really good to meet together in Bangalore. One second. Let me just say hi to Nitu. Hi, Nitu. How have you been? Um, congratulations on your pageant journey. And I'm so happy to see what you've been doing so far. Um, love you and miss you. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> You know about Supermodels of the Year winner, Manila Pradhan. Do you? Okay. 
um, do you think Asian faces have a future, uh, our faces basically, have a future in India in modeling? Do you think that? that, that Definitely, is? I already, um, there are already a lot of um, um, oriental featured models, so as to say, in the fashion industry and um, I think, um, like you said earlier, so that um, we live in a great time wherein a lot of changes are happening. Um, so, um, yes, definitely, I see a great future for features like us um, in the fashion industry. A lot of um, us have been doing ads, lots of campaigns. Um, right, right. And, and so might, I, might I add, yeah. Mm -hmm. And might I add, while we're while we're talking about our faces in, in the in the industry, um, actually now Netflix and Amazon uh, they're mm -hmm. they're expanding and they're looking for stories. And I know, as a filmmaker myself, I know that in mm -hmm. the next five years, Northeast is going to mm -hmm. explode because Northeast exactly. has so much untapped raw talent. talent. So exactly. because you know. It, it never used to happen, you know, uh, in mm -hmm. Sikkim, the, the film industry is, you know, culture is beginning, you know, uh, there was an Amazon series that was shot there, uh, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there are other movies that are being shot in, mm -hmm. in Sikkim and Darjeeling and all that. So I think, I think all you young folks that wants to pursue acting and uh, fashion and modeling, uh, you should definitely go for it, but go with, you know, dedication, discipline, focus, and and uh, perseverance and, uh, yes nothing can stop you <laughs> yes, and preparation. yes 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 so um we have two minutes um i just want to take this time now uh, thank you so mm -hmm. much you know you're so young uh and so inspiring to so many girls from our part of the world and around and uh, i appreciate you doing this talk with me and i hope uh this has been uh, educational. I hope this has been, you know, inspirational for for all the young girls. Especially, mm -hmm. there's a lot of Tibetan girls who are who are uh, who, who've been watching this, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and because you have Tibetan blood in you and Tibetan roots, so they can relate with you. And and I hope uh, they use this as an inspiration to move forward if they want to pursue modeling. Mm -hmm. Any last words that you would like to uh, share before we, before we say? Uh, Good night. <laughs> I would also like this. Uh, like to take this moment to thank you for having me over. So you're such an inspiration yourself, and uh, you're very insightful yourself. And um, um, all the best for all your future projects. Um, thank you. Thank you. All of you watching this, um, Asir, um, he is a filmmaker, and he does so many other more um, things related to art. So keep yourself um, tuned to watch, sir. And his work um, unveil. Oh. Uh, thank you so thank much, you so for, much for having me. Sir. And thank you so much to everybody for watching us. And hope yes. this was helpful to all of you. And hope you all take something from today's session that we just had. Yes, thank you so much, guys. And uh, uh, we, ha I have one minute left, so I just want everybody to know that today's session with both uh, uh, Summer Jacobs and Pedin. Uh, it will be in my story, so please go through it and more people will watch it and then share it and then I will save it and at some point I'm putting all the mm -hmm. all the sessions uh, up on YouTube and I hope it can help. Oh, wow. So so uh, having said that, tomorrow I have Jigmi Ugen who goes from Kalimpong all the way to the US politics and he is a very, very, wow. he's in a very big position there. So tune in tomorrow night uh, to to to, to hear the story of Jigme again. And then on um, on Friday, I have Tenzin Dala, a Tibetan Bollywood actor. He is in the movie Guilty right now, Margarita with a Straw, Akuni. And he's also coming up with uh, A.R. Rahman's film. Um, and wow. I have a Canadian Hollywood actor uh, named uh, Alex Ponvik on Friday. And on Saturday, we have a Tibetan filmmaker based in Vietnam. Uh, Sering Gyaltang and myself talking about filmmaking and I have India's top cinematographers coming also uh, India's Bollywood's top somebody oh. who shoots Shah Rukh Khan. So take care. Good night. Lots of love. Good night.